So the best gaming phone is upon us. It is the new Red Magic 8 Pro. Fan cooled stool with a 20,000 RPM little tiny fan in there. It keeps everything cool. And this so far is the phone that throttles the least as expected being actively cooled, unlike all the other models which are passively cooled. So the Red Magic 8 Pro, what makes it different is a complete redesign now of it. So it's still got a large screen and it's a flat screen here too, which I'm really loving, 6.8 inches, 120 hertz, but it now has an under display camera, 16 megapixels. The back of it covered in glass and it's transparent with this void version that I do have that they sent me. Now this model, has a whopping 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of UFS 4.0 storage. The camera on the rear is now 50 megapixels, and I think it has the potential to be the absolute best if they just iron out a few things that I'll be covering in this in-depth review of the Red Magic 8 Pro. Included with the Red Magic 8 Pro, you'll find our 65 watt charger, nice small size to it, a Type-C to Type-C cable, warranty card, and we do get a clear TPU case, which makes sense because I have the transparent version and you can see all of those details. Now it clips onto the top and the bottom and it's only giving us just minimal protection here, but at least I can still see all of the transparent stuff, the RGB using this case. So the Type-C port down the bottom, this here does support video out, clone display. We've got antenna lines there. Metal frame around the whole outside. And I think this phone looks fantastic. I love the fact that there are no curved edges, no curved glass, no curved glass with the front screen at all, just 100% flat. Microphone and the SIM tray here takes two nano SIMs. Loudspeaker. On this side, we've got a volume up and down. Intake vent here, and that's where it blows the hot air out of this side right here. So here at the top, we've got a power button, another microphone at the top, and then our triggers. Now these triggers, they do have a 512 hertz rate to them, so they're super responsive. And this is our switch here to go into the dedicated gaming mode, which uh, I think I was just in. Okay, you just flick that. And you can even run those games in a smaller window if you wanted to do that. So you flick that and then it launches the game mode, as you can see right now. Turns on the fan, gives you all the game settings, which I will get onto later. So this screen here, absolutely fantastic. So it's 120 hertz. It's an AMOLED screen that has a second generation under display camera. It's 16 megapixels. And you see when I zoom right in, you can't see that. So it's right there and it's pretty much impossible to see. And I think for a gaming phone, this is perfect. It's a full screen experience, no ugly notch, no ugly cutout, nothing. The trade-off is, yes, the selfie camera, I'll tell you now, is very bad. The quality, it's quite blurred. I mean, you can take photos with it. I'll give you some samples later on. You can shoot vlogs with it, but yeah, it's definitely not for selfie lovers and people who vlog a lot. You probably don't want to have this front facing camera, but I mean, look how amazing the screen looks. Because this does have the extra cooling in it and a very large 6,000 milliamp hour battery, it's a little thicker than most phones. It's 9.47 millimeters and it is heavy. Okay, so 228 grams. You get used to it. I don't mind the size of it. And I think, again, this is another one of those trade-offs that it's worth it to have a slightly thicker phone, but better battery life and better cooling is definitely worth it to me. So this screen, as I mentioned before, I really like it. 120 hertz, it's full HD plus, it's an AMOLED. And I'll just show you the options we do get in here with it because there is a few settings in here and one of them I really do like. So refresh rate, you can set it to 90 hertz. So many companies don't offer this. It's the sweet spot. And they've even put it there, the perfect combination of fluid, fluency and power consumption. It should actually say fluidity. Anyway, it's probably the translation went a little bit wrong there, but it's a good option to have. So we don't have any resolution options because that's it. It's full HD plus, and that's a perfect resolution again for this type of phone, being a gaming phone. So you've got all these different screen options in here. I've kept it on Vivid because that's the default one, but you can see we've got sRGB, color temperature, you can set that, warm, cool, customize that all yourself. Pretty standard there for options, dark mode and all that. Now, touch response. This happens to be one of the best that I've used so far because it's got a 960 hertz touch sampling rate, so very quick. 
and I've never had it really fail on me. And you can even increase the sensitivity with some of the settings through there with it. It does have DC dimming. That's why you're not seeing any banding with my cameras right now with this, which you can sometimes see. And I'll just go in to adjust the brightness here a little bit. You see that even if, if I dull it right down, the screen is not flickering. And just looking at it quickly at the corner of my eye, I don't see flicker like I sometimes do with the Xiaomi 13 Pro that I have. It doesn't have DC dimming and I sometimes detect a little bit of flickering. Not with this screen, so it's an excellent display. Max brightness on this panel. I don't have an official number, but I did measure it with what I've got, my equipment, and it's looking like it's just over 800 nits. Now, you can make it out in direct sunlight just fine. You can send WhatsApp messages and whatnot. Now, the banding you're seeing, this is just due to the shutter rate of my camera I used to record this outdoor clip. But it's just to show you that, yes, you can make it out in direct sunlight, which is great. So overall, this is an excellent screen. Look at those bezels. They're nice and slim. Top and bottom, left and right. They're looking good. And of course, real deep black colors being an AMOLED screen. So I think it's a fantastic gaming panel. What I love the most about it is that it's flat and there's no ugly cutout. So right here where a camera would be, of course, we've got that under display camera and you really don't see it. It's only at certain angles in the sunlight you might see it and sometimes it will show up a little sunlight logo there covering over that camera as you can see now this little sample I'm giving you. So the phone is running what is called their Red Magic OS and it's version 6.0 and I like the optimization. It's very fast, very fluid as you'd expect for a crazy 16 gigabytes of RAM then with this chipset, then with the UFS 4.0 storage. Now there are a few little quirks and things. It doesn't like third party launches because you can't set them as default. I haven't found a way to do that. So if I wanna run, for example, like Nova 7 and set that all up, uh, as soon as you go back home, of course, it's just gonna override that and we go back to the Red Magic OS here 6.0. Now I'll show you a couple of the settings in here that there are a few customizations. Now I can't go into huge amounts of detail here, otherwise the video is gonna be like 30 minutes long. Now there's settings for the cooling fan that a lot of you will probably like, so you can adjust that manually on or off. You can go and put it into the auto mode, but when you go into the gaming mode, with most games, it's gonna turn on anyway. I just tend to leave it in the auto mode. You can adjust it for charging if you wanted to. Now, there's one thing I noticed here that under network, your SIM cards, uh, I can't see anything about eSIMs, all right? It doesn't seem to be there. I hope that's coming with another firmware update or something, but I just can't seem to find anything. Now, yes, your voiceover LTE, that's working. I can enable that. 5G is also working here in Europe. No problems with it. And GPS and everything's working great. All of that seems to be good. Now, the fluidity of this is very good. Really fast, fluid. I've noticed no lag, no stutters or anything. And battery stats. Now, that's something that's been missing on the other ROMs. Let's just have a quick look here if we can actually view some of that. Now, it seems we can, which is good. It's giving us a bit of a breakdown, but it's not the, the usual kind of detailed battery stats you do have with some other brands, uh, which is a, a slight annoyance there. I am, by the way, on the latest firmware. So fast, fluid. Really good, but you can't use third party launches with this particular UI, unfortunately. That's the big downside to it. Now the multitasking with it, very good because it's not that quick to kill things off in the background. And I do find that when you're swapping between different apps and everything, it's good. Now, if you need something to be always open, you've got that option, of course, of locking it. You've got split screen, which has been around for some time with Android, so you can run that if you wanted to do so. And I do find that because I've probably got the 16 gigabytes of RAM, it's not really killing things off, not in a hurry to kill things off in the background, including games too. And you can keep games running because you're able to just run it as a little screen, even continue, for example, sending WhatsApp messages and have the game open here so you don't have to worry about being booted off the server or something. So they are definitely gaming focused 100% with this phone as I'll show you shortly. But there's just a few other bits and pieces here I wanted to point out to you. And that is that when you first get the phone, bloatware, there really isn't any apart from this weird browser that I just decided not to use and removed it anyway. You can use Google Chrome, Google Play Store. So those are the apps you do get. We'll just ignore these ones that I installed myself. There are basically is only maybe two bloatware applications. That's it. And one of them is that. So really good. I wish more manufacturers would do this. So I am on the latest version here at the time of me recording 
this review and I do hope there are some updates coming. I'm sure they will be. One of them I hope is going to do something about the eSIM support with this particular model. So it does support a Widevine level one cert. Uh, Netflix is running full HD, which is good. It's what you want, of course. Amazon Prime Video and stuff like that. And here you see that we still got this problem with them. This has been around for some time now. And I know I, I talk about it in all my videos with Red Magic, especially is they're still using this terrible bit rate for video, the audio in video that is, of 96 kilobits per second. That's terrible. It should be at least like 196. And a lot of other brands are using 320, which Xiaomi just started to use again. And I hope this can be fixed, but I'm not holding my breath because other patches, other models never change that audio bit rate. Camera 2 API for all of the cameras, we've got level 3 support, which is good. So that means if you wanted to use, say, Gcam port, open camera, with that 50 megapixel main camera, you're, you're able to do so. And you just get a different style of photos, of course. So charge time, it's good. As you can see right here, very good. 36 minutes to go from 3% to 100. Now, they've got the cell, this, the battery split into two different cells. So one 3,000, the other 3,000, and it's charging both of them at the same time. So that's how they achieve these pretty good rates. Anything that's under like an hour, I'm happy. And for a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, yes, that's the capacity. Just ignore this. And Tutu often gets this calculation wrong. So it's what I'm focusing on here is the charging time. So you'll see that if you run a stress test like this one, which is 3D Mark, uh, it's really good. Now I'll just bring in some other phones here. This here is the Xiaomi 13 Pro, same exact chipset. And here is the Vivo. This is the X90 Pro Plus. Now take a look at the stability. This is going to let us know how much is it going to throttle. And you will notice that, okay, it's 93% here with the Vivo X90 Pro Plus. So that lost 7% performance. Then you see with the Xiaomi over 20%. Oh dear. So it throttled quite a lot. And then take a look at this. Because of the fan cooler and all that extra cooling, it throttled only 0.4% performance loss. That is basically nothing. And do you see this in games? You do. You play a game like Genshin Impact, which later I'll test out, the frame rate is constant. It just sits at 60 frames per second on the highest possible settings, and you never see any dip whatsoever. Whereas with the Xiaomi, after about the 15 minute mark, I notice the frame rate drops and loses about 10 frames per second on average. And then our battery life, this doesn't come as a surprise to me and I'll explain why. This is a fixed battery life test and it's running the same exact thing. So very good to gauge between different phones. And why is it so different? Well, we do have the larger battery capacity right here, 6,000 milliamp hours. However, these two other phones are running a higher resolution. They're running WQHD+, which is basically 1440p+, where this is a 1080p screen. So the larger battery with the lower resolution just wins out here when it comes to the battery life. So it went for 14 hours and 41 minutes versus 12 hours, 42, and then the 10, just over 10 hours. Now, real world use, you're looking about eight hours of on-screen time versus about seven with this one versus around, and I really struggle with the Xiaomi to get over six hours. That's about six and a half hours on-screen time at the moment. There's something going on with the firmware too. The battery life seems to be quite poor at the moment with that phone, but really good here with the Red Magic 8 Pro. The Antutu score here, as you can see, is just shy of 1.3 million points. Now I have seen a phone do 1.3 million. This officially is meant to go over 1.3 million, but I don't know what version that Red Magic used to test it out. But this is my result, and it's an amazing result. So with other phones that can get 1.3 million, the problem is they throttle down because they're passively cooled. When you game for 15 minutes, you end up losing about 15, 20%, even more performance, which of course doesn't happen with this because it's fan cooled. So you can see the thermals, it went up from this one test, 4.4 degrees, and I did lose 3% battery. Audio quality with this phone, very good. Now it does have three microphones with it, which is great. And the voice call quality, good. And I really love this, the fact that I can just go along and plug in a 3.5 millimeter headphone. Now, the good thing about the location of where they put it is that when you're gaming, the gaming triggers are up here. It's not in the way because imagine if it was in the middle or down this side here, then that would be a bit of a problem for holding it. So it's a good location too 
where it is. And of course, for a gaming phone, you do need to have a wired connection, I feel, because of the latency. Bluetooth earbuds, they're never spot on, especially in games. There will always be a fraction of a delay. But of course, with wired, you don't get that at all. So the loudspeakers down the bottom, one here and then the other one up the top, they do sound good. Um, nice bit of little bass to them. Mids are all right. Volume's decent. It's not the loudest I've heard, but I'll give you a sample at 100% volume now. Then on to the gaming mode. So it's called Game Space and it's a gaming hub. So you just launch it by flicking that switch. It's what I did right now. And you feel a bit of haptics there and it boots up relatively quick. Now, what it will do is clear out the memory as well to maximize gaming performance. So under this right here, there's a huge amount of different settings. I won't go into all of them. So they've got game achievements, network settings, screen settings, anti-disturbance settings. So you can block messages, incoming calls. We'll go into window. You've got your system anti miss touch settings for that mirror host mode and a few other things things in there too as well there's lots okay uh competitive atmosphere led well that's for customizing the leds on the back here so hopefully we're going to see this i'll just turn them on all right you can see now it's all lit up okay see all this and i'll just change that over the color oops for some reason i've swiped that by mistake so there's different you can go into floating flashing sorry i'll just run the green and you can see now that is flashing at the top there green. So it's just, just the red magic and those top parts. And then of course, we've got the RGB with the light, but you can't change those there. It's something, it's a little extra there too. So you've got wallpaper, their watermark, you can add to everything if you wanted to do that. So people know that you're gaming on a red magic phone, uh, other options here. And then each game has its own settings too, which I will show you. You can customize it and then you've got customization and how to set up those triggers too. So what I'll do is go into Pump G. In fact, I think you can select here the settings for it. Okay, there's a few other settings there. So you can run X keyboard. This is setting up a mouse and keyboard for the game. And I'll just start it here and I'll show you the settings. Now setting up the triggers, that is the same thing. So you need to swipe twice from the sides, you bring it up, but you wanna tap here and that is our triggers. So they are emulating touch with those top triggers there that are 512 hertz, the sampling rate of them. So I'm going to move the left over here. And I think the other settings about here. And you'll see that when I tap the left trigger, it's going to trigger that. All right. So that's, again, this is the touch emulation. And you'll see that you can probably, it's hard to make out, but it's also displaying at the top there like I'm touching the triggers. So this is handy. So when you're gaming, you're holding it here, especially with a game like PUBG or Call of Duty, you can tap to look down the scope and then tap to fire as well. And you do get used to using these and it becomes a lot faster, I find, than using these touch controls. I have only one kill so far, but the game is running really well, as you'd expect with this hardware and 16 gigabytes of RAM, Snapdragon, 8 Gen 2, 60 frames per second constantly. This is easy. The GPU is not even being stressed out at all and it won't get hot, not with the fan either. So constant performance. So those triggers, I'll just demonstrate. So if I tap here on the right, that is to look down the sights and then to fire and it works great. And what, <laughs> what just happened? Oh no. All right, so that's another Bug because this is actually the second time it's happened to me. For some reason, it's crashing PUBG on me. So the, the firm, firmware is not stable. And as you expect, gaming, Genshin Impact, it's a constant 60 frames per second. And whoa, it's freezing up. Okay, so it seems that that bugginess I experienced with the audio cutting in and out, it's also in, causing some sort of interrupts issue and making the game lock and freeze up. If so if that wasn't happening right now, then this would be 60 frames per second. So let's take a look at our camera performance now with the Red Magic 8 Pro. So the front-facing camera, as I mentioned at the start and when we looked at the design, that it's an under-display camera. So the camera sensor has to look around the pixels and this is why this image quality does not look very good at all. So if you're into vlog footage and you take a lot of selfies and things, this is not the phone for that, or at least not using the front-facing camera. Now 1080p max here with the video quality and the audio bitrate is only 96 kilobits per second so i do hope they can improve upon that but they haven't in the past with their other phones so i'm not holding my breath that they up it to say 196 or 320 kilobits per second it doesn't seem to have any electronic image stabilization at all either let's have a look at the rear cameras now for video 
So with the rear camera, hello Sophia, say hello to everyone. Hola. Hola. Hello. Can shoot 4K 30 frames per second, 4K 60, and we do have electronic image stabilization. This is the main sensor here at the moment. Now with the zoom, if I try to pull back, it won't go over to the ultra wide camera because the ultra wide only supports 1080p video, but I can apply a little bit of digital zoom here. So this is two times, and I'm just gonna walk now, I'll zoom out to one times here, just walk more quicker, steady pace, just a bit of a jog, testing out that stabilization here. So the video quality is okay, but certainly other flagship phones do have a better set of cameras. The focus of this phone, of course, is gaming and not so much video performance or, or the stills here. This is now 8K, so it's 30 frames per second, but it does not have any electronic image stabilization. So as I walk here, you can see it is shaking around a lot. So you want to use a gimbal or a tripod if you plan to record 8K footage. Now it doesn't seem to have a time limit to the 8K footage either. So you can just record as long as you've got enough battery life and storage to support that. Ultra wide camera, this is 1080p maximum and to record ultra wide video you have to go into the pro mode for some reason and I find this quality along with the stills for the ultra wide not good at all so it looks quite washed out and I don't even know if it's using electronic image stabilization so I would not be recording at all ultra wide video with the Red Magic 8 Pro because this I don't think is acceptable quality not for a flagship like this either it looks more like I'm shooting this on a budget $200 affordable phone not something that's quite a bit more expensive with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 as for our stills, the best way to describe these cameras are poor. Not really flagship grade at all, as you can tell. So this is the 8 megapixel ultra wide, and it takes a poor shot. Don't get me wrong, it's great we've got an ultra wide camera, but they could have used a better sensor in this phone. So clearly the focus is not with the photography. This portrait shot here of my daughter, it's all right. The background blurring's okay, the stitching's a bit off, and it's a little too bright. The colors are also off. In general, you will find that a lot, that the colors just aren't so great. So this photo is not the portrait mode and it's all right, that's a good usable photo. So in daylight, like any phone nowadays, you can take okay photos, decent photos, but look at this, this is just, no, oh, it's all over the place. It's got a lot of clipping, the colors are just oversaturated, not amazing. The shot here of Vera, it's indoors and again, there's a lot of noise to it, not a brilliant shot. This is the main five megapixel, sorry, 50 megapixel camera. The shot of the red hibiscus, off the colors, it's oversaturated, it's clipping colors, not good at all. So a lot of optimization clearly needed with these cameras. A low light performance, also very disappointing. This is the night mode and it just looks like a weird kind of low quality AI painting or oil painting mode. Okay, so obviously this is not a phone for selfie lovers. If you're someone that's always out there taking, you know, five selfie photos a day for social media, then you won't be happy. Let's just face it. I'll be blunt here. You won't be happy with this front-facing camera or any under display camera because they all suffer from that same problem. They're going to be a little bit blurry. They won't be as sharp. I mean, there's software tricks that have improved the quality and they are getting better. This is now the second generation of an under display camera. Um, that it just won't give you that quality of a normal front-facing camera. Now, what I like about it, for people that don't take a lot of selfies, gamers that don't, then you've got that full screen experience, which looks absolutely fantastic. Great screen, it's got the high touch sampling rate, the touch controls, the awesome cooling on this. This thing does not throttle at all. We can get the true performance of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, just as we did with the previous models with no throttling. Now it will get a little warm when you're gaming, but what concerns me at the moment in the time of this video is what I showed you, that the ROM stability just isn't there at the moment. There are some bugs that are present, they're quite bad bugs, and they are on to it, they're going to be fixing it, but I just thought I would still let you know that at the time of me testing it out, the firmware isn't stable. Now there's still the third-party launcher support, eSIMs, I don't know what's gonna happen there with that, so maybe wait and see. But once the firmware matures, those bugs are fixed, we certainly have right here the best, in terms of hardware, gaming phone that you can buy. The performance, the cooling, video out, 3.5mm headphone jack, 
the gaming triggers, the gaming features, the software, it is all there. So thank you so much for watching my review of the Red Magic 8 Pro.